Meet Europe's most famous chin. The Habsburg jaw wasn't a single person's quirk. It became a family brand. For centuries, the Habsburgs married strategically to keep crowns, land, and alliances in the family. Sometimes that meant cousin to cousin, and yes, even uncle to niece. Politically smart, genetically risky. The so-called Habsburg jaw is mandibular prognathism, a forward lower jaw with a long chin and often a big lower lip. You can spot it in portraits of Maximilian I, Charles V, and most dramatically, Charles II of Spain. Facial traits are heritable, and when you keep marrying relatives, you recycle the same genes over and over. Over many generations, that can amplify family features. Historians and geneticists have shown the dynasty's inbreeding levels climbed across the Spanish line, which helps explain why the trait shows up so strongly. It wasn't one magic chin gene. Traits like jaw shape are influenced by many genes and development. Artists also like to emphasize recognizable features in royal portraits, so the famous chin is part biology, part branding. By the time Charles II takes the Spanish throne in the late 1600s, he inherits not just an empire but a genetic tangle. His portraits show an extreme version of the jaw, and he struggled with health and fertility, ending the Spanish Habsburg line and handing Europe a succession crisis. After the War of the Spanish Succession, the Bourbon line takes over in Spain, and the Habsburgs continue in Austria. The jaw becomes a cautionary tale in royal matchmaking and a case study in how politics can shape a family's face. In short, power politics, closed marriage circles, and a very memorable profile. For more history that sticks like a strong chin, follow BuzzBrain.